Hello, good day, and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about root scope. And we're going to introduce it because we're going to try and use it to help solve a problem. The problem we have is sharing data between different routes. So far, in the last video, we learned how you can do route parameter to pass some data to the route controller. But we can't pass everything that way. And so if you think about it, let's say you had in our to-do application, you wanted to pass an edit, an I to do to be edited, from the list to the edit form, you can't pass every, well, you wouldn't want to pass everything um, on using road parameters. So we're going to see what kind of problem we're going to solve on, um, with the root scope. But we're going to get there slowly. So let's get into it. So one of the things I enter that is, let's say we had an application and we had a road for listing all items. And then we want a route for creating new items. And of course, we want a route now that we know about direct routing so you can see which item you want to edit. How do we pass the information from the list of which item to edit? Or once you create a new item, how do we get it back to the controller where it needs to add it to the um, list that it's going to be displaying? So that's kind of like the problem we're trying to solve when we try to set up more complex application with multiple routes in this sort of way. If we go back to this idea of the MVC, uh, what we have is this. We have our data at the bottom there, and it says that it's accessible to all, accessible to all our, you know, routes and controllers. And so in theory, this should work, right? If we have a listing route, its controller is going to pull up some data and prepare it for the view from some store, some global or whatever um, store of the model. And, you know, when we switch over to the new route, it shouldn't be any problem because that controller can just insert or add data to um, that model. And same thing when we go to edit, we will somehow pass along some information in the model that says, this is the thing I want to edit or is this the one that's selected for editing. And when we go to the edit um, route, it controller would say, oh, which one am I supposed to edit? And pull up that one and give us the edit. And, of course, when we save it, make those changes and persist it, it puts it back in the model so that when we again navigate back to our listing, everything will be thing and our model is always consistent regardless of which view we're using to display it or change it, right? So that's in theory how things should be. Instead, this is what's been happening for us so far, is that everything we change to our road, our control kind of prepares in some new data, right? Um, when we do listing, we create a uh, scope that, you know, items array, for example, and that is our control of preparing a new array and sticking it on the scope. And again, the scope, remember, is specific for this route, for the list and route, right? And we're going to see that in um, the demo when we're going to look at it in the um, next. And same thing when we go over to the new route, when we navigate over to the new route, again, we created some more new objects there for that, that um, scope and even when we pass like you know edits for slash id 5 or 1 are we saying that we really really want to do is edit the item that enlisted at, uh, at um, in the list at 5 or maybe in the array at whatever um, it's still that's all the information we could follow about which one to edit but we still don't have the list of things that we can pull out the one that we want to edit and now when we make changes, we're to put back that so the listing route with, um, controller would have access to it, right? Because now each one of these controllers are actually using the other thing. So let's play with that a little bit and see it in code. All right. So let's take a look at our example here of not being able to share any data between our controllers because we showed each controller maintain its own data. And let's just test this application for us. So here we are in the listing view slash and we see a list and we could click on item and we get edit forward slash one and it's pre-populated with some data but um, if we click update we could see that doesn't change it goes back to the listing because we know how to do that and here again is the same thing it's populated with but that's just some sample data what if we do add new type something we click save it goes back but nothing no data is being shared so how is that happening well you know how to create links to um, routes already, so we use href and we set pong sign forward slash. And so I pull out the code into this separate um, app.js. And before we look at the code, let's look at the list and form. List and form is not very fancy, just a table, list and some item. Um, but the 
link is constructed um, you know as pong forward slash edit forward slash a index plus one and we're computing the index of course which is zero plus one and so that's what we get you know edit this one forward slash one and so on um, or edit form again pretty simple to um, input and a button and we're gonna switch the button based on whether we're editing the form or adding a new item if it's a new item we want to show the save button and hide the update button if it's not new we want to hide not show the uh, save button and of course not hide the update button and so that's pretty easy to do um, you know this is our route and we've made sure that our view in the slash you're doing the list and form and the list con item controller if you are new using the same edit form and the add item controller and if you want the uh, edit for um, route you're using the edit form and the edit item controller so the same two um, these two routes use the same form but because of the different controllers they can set up the values of initialize certain values so here in add we want to set is new to true and of course we want to start with an empty item because right, this is new and of course we want to provide a save function which um, is going to be called by the save button on the other hand when and then go return to the list and route on the other hand if you're doing the edit you want to set is new to false and of course initialize some item that you're going to be editing now the thing to note here is that where do we get the item to edit from well if we say scope that items that's we don't have access to that that's our own scope we're talking about so do we create a new array well if we create a new array it's going to be empty where do we get it from and same thing here with new when we add something where do we push it onto scope that item well there's no connect there's no connection between this scope the scope created for this controller and the scope created for the list controller so they're not the same and so that's what we were showing before when we said oh, each our controller have their own data so far and of course the only th other thing to note here is we're using the road param to get our id and of course when we get it we have to subtract one from it because um, you know we added one to it when we constructed the the road the dynamic road and i'm just casting this value to a number to make sure that when i do subtract one it treats it as a numeric expression okay all right so that's that and we've already played with it so now let's go and see how we can actually start sharing data by revisiting an idea of nested scopes that we mentioned way back when we introduced um, controllers in angular so that fails so that's the problem i wanted to just illustrate it so but we said before when we introduced controllers that and scope that actually scope can nest and we saw that by the fact that if at a higher uh, div tag that con controllers work on you know div tag you could put them on a not div tag on a tag or element and it works on the that element and any other element nested within so that allows your scope to nest so in this example if we look at the innermost scope there for full controller and we look at text if full controller doesn't provide a value for text Angular is going to say, oh, the first place I should look because there's the closest scope is full. It's not there. Then I'll look in the outer scope, which is bar. And if it's not there, I'll go up to the main scope. If we jump all the way down to the bottom, we look at the goo controller and that diff tag there. If goo controller does not provide a value for text, then again, Angular is going to say, oh, it's not in goo controller. I'm going to go up and look in main control because that's the next outermost controller up for the goo controller. And so this kind of makes sense, right? We've played with this already and we show how you can use different values to have this thing re resolved. So one way to think of it is sort of like a tree where our main controller is at the top and then bar controller is below main. And so if something is not in bar for when uh, we're in that scope, it would look in main. And if we're in full, because bar is appearing to full, if something is not in full, it would look in main, bar and if it's not in bar, then it goes up to min. You know, the thing just keep continuing regardless of how deep you nest. And of course, goo is the same thing. So now that we know this or remember it, we can map our problem back to the same thing and use a nested controller. In this case, what we want is a main controller um, to provide some information that's across all the controllers. Of course, we still want our listing controller or new controller or edit controller to provide the very specific things for those routes. But in terms of like the items that we want to display and have modified across the controllers, 
why not use something like a main controller above to, to do it? This is what this would look like for us. We'll have our different routes, and then we'll have this one controller that is going to provide the, the data. So even though the controller is providing creating the data, because of the nesting, it becomes like, um, even though it's kind of local to that controller, it's accessible to the different routes. And hence why I cut it a little bit darker for the controller and the data, especially because our most, like the data at this point now, gets not, is as if it gets shared, it gets shared across all the controllers. So let's get to see this in practice. All right, so in this example, things are a little bit different. Um, now we're gonna talk about sharing data. And so the only change on this index form is now instead of um, just hard coding the username, which wouldn't make sense if I have a multi-user application, because I wanna be able to populate the username based on who logged in. So I'll expect that to come from some controller or the other. So I have a main controller. Uh, let me go back to this form. I have a main controller that I added to the body and that control, this value is going to be looked up in that main controller. We still have our ng view, which is going to be controlled by, you know, with the route, corresponding route and uh, whatever the specified controller and template is. But for this part of the page, the entire body, if you have something that's not provided by any one of the view controller, the route controller, then it's going to be looked up in this main controller. And so here is my main controller and it provides the value X. And because I know it's nest, one of the things I can do is also provide my array of items here. And now in all, so my list controller doesn't need anything because that's all it was doing. And how do I know that how this is gonna resolve? Because once I go to the slash listing route, it's gonna try and find a, value for items, not gonna see it provided by this list controller and go up to the control above it, which is, you know, which is in closing, which is the main controller. It's gonna find it there and it's gonna provide the list in which you see in here, it's working, right? This is the example. And um, again, I have, um, if we go to the add, um, the new route, it's going to use this add item controller and this one provides a save item. Um, where is it pushing it to? Look at this, it's using scope that items. But scope that items is not defined here. Well, that's because Angular is doing some tricks for us and it's saying, well, before I create this scope, I see that this scope is nested within the scope created by this guy. So it creates a scope, insert it into main, get it populated with you know, user X or with user value and items value, and then uses that to link it to this scope. So by the time we get into this scope, we actually have a copy of user and a copy of items. So when we reference items, it's the same reference to this um, very value that we have here. And so when we add to it, yes, it's, it is modifying the exact same item. And we'll see that in a minute. And the same thing goes for um, the edit, right? We can access here the item to edit simply by, again, getting the index, which we calculate from the dynamic route using the road parameter and we subtract one and now we can look it up and when the user change it we can just put it back in on scope that item and the scopes that item because we don't actually have a that items here but we are this controller is nested once this route is navigated to inside of this main controller it's going to use this so let's see that in action so if I click add for example that's the easiest thing to do and I'm gonna say item three or item X, for example. And I say save, you can see it's added. And I'm gonna click on this and I said, you know, updated. And, and of course you see it's being updated, okay? So that tells you that it's work and we're actually sharing data. And notice how um, my user X, depending on who the user is, which I might have determined at login, and this controller would have been populated accordingly, okay? So that works um, with uh, when we use a controller um, on the, you know, we nest our controllers, all right? Hope, hopefully that makes sense. But there's one other thing that we can do that Angular provides us. And we'll take a look at that now. And it's still the idea of nested scope. We're making progress. Um, using the shared um, scope and controller, the main one, 
um, the nested control, we solved that problem. So things are working. But it was really weird. If you remember, when you look at the code, within the listing controller, you would say scope that items. And uh, it looked like if item supposed to be local, but really item is coming in from a parent controller that you don't know about or you know, if you ever change the order of things, it, you could be, be messed up. And it's just harder to maintain because it looks like if you're accessing something that's supposed to be local, when in fact is defined by some outer thing. So it'd be nice to be more explicit about what we're doing. We want to access something that's not defined in this controller, so we should be able to say that. And we can get this with the root scope. So the root scope is a scope that Angular provides you. It's always there. It's always been there. Uh, you can think of it like a global scope that's always there. And all the thing to remember about the root scope is that all your scope derives directly from it or indirectly. So when we use main controller, for example, to provide a scope for the index page, um, you know, the body um, element, there's a scope that's created for it. That scope inherits from the root scope. And then, of course, because of how we have nested, um, we've used the ng view, now all those other rows get placed within the main um, controller scope, the scope created by the main controller. So, of course, they too now also indirectly um, are there below the root scope. So, if we put something in the root scope, guess what? B scope also get it because of what we said. When scopes nest, in regards to how deep they nest, if you try to resolve a variable at that level, it's not there, it moves up to the parent and keep moving up. So eventually we're going to hit the root scope and that's where Angular stops trying to resolve things. So let's see how we can use this in our example now. So let's look at our final demo here. And so of our example, how to use the root scope, which we just described. And so um, I, only, I, I didn't change anything else. I didn't change edit, index, list, or anything else except this file, the source code here, app.js. And the only places I've changed something is right in front of you. All the code is here. And let's look at line 21. I've introduced root scope. I've told Angular hit my function expect two things, scope and root scope. And Angular is smart enough to scan this, see that's what I'm expecting, and inject this value appropriately. It doesn't matter the order you put it in. Angular actually look at the name, and it uses that. And so the only change I have now is that I changed from using just dollar sign scope to actually using the root scope. So I'm saying that oh, I'm hanging my item further up. I'm hanging it on the parent of the main controller, which is the root scope. And then in the, all the other controllers, I'm going to reference root scope directly. I'm going to have it injected. And then I'm going to reference the root scope directly and say root scope that item. So for someone reviewing this code, it's actually clear where items is coming from and where it's defined. And so if you just started looking at this function and you see root scope that item, you go, oh, they stuck items on a root scope. Where did they do that? Do that? And so you would look through the code to find where and again your root scope was used. And here it is. It was used here to where the item was added to the scope. And so it's a little bit clearer and cleaner than if you just do that scope because you can imagine that how you might have controllers nested much more deeply and so on, and you don't know where it would have been added if you just sort of used that just scope the, and referring to the parent who might have added it, right? So this is one way where I think this is actually cleaner than the previous one, but this is not a real use for root scope because we'll talk about it a little bit when we close, but you don't want to really populate the root scope, or, um, pollute it rather, um, with you know, your own thing, too much of your own thing. There's some other good uses for the root scope, and we will see that much later on. But I also wanted to show you how we can still share data using the root scope. And it's a little bit cleaner. If you had to do it this way, I'd prefer doing it this way than the other way because this is more maintainable because it makes explicit that you're sharing data through the root scope as opposed to like a parent scope and you have to find which parent. And if you move them around on the form, you know, you'd lose, you, you, you would break up your application just by simply moving things around, okay? The, the order in which, um, the, what encloses which um, controller and so on. All right, so let's conclude now that you've, oh, I haven't shown you this working, but yeah. So I've injected a root scope up here, populated it, injected here and add, and you know, I'm gonna um, add, push stuff onto it, and then inject it here in edit, and then I pull it out to get the thing I'm gonna edit, and then of course, um, you know, ideally we know how the way you really wanna do this is you actually wanna say Angular that, um, you know, copy um, 
right? So it's the best way to do it. That way you don't end up, you know, editing something that, um, so for example, if we didn't do that, uh, we'll go back to the previous one where that bug is there, but we'll fix it. So here's the list of stuff. This is home, add something, bam, bam, bam. There we go, it's added. I can edit something. And if I don't, and if I update it, it's updated. But if I edit this, remove that, but I don't click edit and I went back home, you see it's still, um, it's still edit. That's because we do the copy. On the other hand, if I went back to the previous example and I edit something, I come here, blah, blah, blah. I don't even have to click edit. When I go over here, it's already updated. That's because I'm actually pulling out a reference to the object itself. So we need to do the same thing, which is, you know, when you get something to edit, we want to actually do angular that copy to get a copy of the thing you want to edit. So, you know, you don't actually make any changes until you click update. So bap, 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 click update, it's updated. Click that, I do some change. I decide not to change it. See, it works fine, all right? So by now you guys know this. If you ever see that problem and I fail to do it, at first you guys know how to fix it. All right, so let's close off here with some notes. I think this is a simple example, show you how, um, so we're here. Um, simple example to show you how to use root scope. And in the next video, we are actually gonna start talking about service. Okay, so that kind of wraps up um, this section. Um, I hope that all, um, these examples and this uh, particular episode of the video show you how we evolve from having a problem and getting it resolved. And all the episodes so far I've been trying to do that is show you a problem or show you one way of doing something and then slowly show you a better way of doing it. And so we're gonna um, continue on the same track. It's been there from the very beginning when I just started out very simply and just layer on one thing after the other and we're just getting better and better. Okay, so we're going to do services next and we're going to see how services help us solve some of these problems also, but in a much nicer and scalable way. So again, I hope I've been able to teach you something. I hope you're enjoying the video so far and please give me feedback if you have them and of course spread the word again. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Spread the word. Have others sub ask others to subscribe. Thanks for your time and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.